Welcome to my natural hair. It's probably the first time some of you have seen my natural hair because my first few videos I have braids in. But anyways, so welcome to 2015. So this is a video for 20, uh, can't get it out. This is a video for 15 new teacher tips or tips for new teachers. So these are all, these are not the obvious tips, but these are more the tips where you don't really think about it unless you are a new teacher. So 12, 15, huh, I keep saying, I keep saying um, 20, 15 new tips for new teachers from a new teacher. So let's get started. Tip number one is to buddy with a new teacher. So typically if you're a brand new teacher at a new school, you will get assigned a mentor that's there to help you and guide you through your first year. But I also suggest to buddy with one of the other new teachers if there is another new teacher in the building because it's very helpful to work together, find out things you both don't know or you both have questions to, and it just feels more comfortable knowing that there's someone else going through what you're going through, going through all the struggles and the hardships and everything that comes with being a new teacher. So um, I have that in in my school, and I don't know if I, how I would have gone through the school year without um, some of the other new teachers that I'm around. Tip number two is to, in the very beginning, to plan way ahead of time. Plan as far ahead of time as you possibly can. And when I say plan, I mean plan every second of the day, especially in the first few, in the first week or two of school, because um, it can get very chaotic. And it's, there's so many things besides teaching and planning that new teachers are supposed to do, it can become overwhelming very quickly. So when you have all of these um, plans already done, um, it, it makes your life so much easier. So, tip number three, so it may sound a little silly, but I would suggest creating a Word document or an Excel document for your usernames, a, your website, and your passwords, because when you become a new teacher, you get thrown all these login information for all these websites that you can use, that you're supposed to be using, and sometimes it gets overwhelming and you don't know what password is for what, and you can't get into any website. So I suggest when you start getting these emails to create a spreadsheet where it lists the website, what it's used for, if it's a mandatory website that you have to use or if it's an optional website that you can use in your classroom along with the username and the password so you um, just have a little guide to go back on. Okay, tip number four may sound a little strange but do not volunteer for anything. You know, in the school year, they're always asking for volunteers to, you know, who wants to run this club or who wants to do this and all these other millions of things that you can volunteer for. But if you can get away with it, do not volunteer for anything because being a new teacher is overwhelming enough. You don't need to add any more unnecessary things to your plate. So I would just suggest to just um, get away with what you can and try not to volunteer for anything. If you do have to, try to only volunteer for the mandatory things that you really have to do that you can't get away from. Tip number five is to experiment in your classroom. It's your classroom, you're a new teacher, you have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. The only way that I've gotten to the point that I am now where I feel really comfortable and I'm having a lot of fun in my classroom is because I did experiment. I tried things, some of them didn't work, so I took it out and I changed it. And um, it's your classroom, so experiment. You know, it's, some things won't work, some things will work, but if you don't experiment, you won't ever find the awesome things that really work well in your classroom. Tip number six also goes along with the previous tip is if something doesn't work, change it. Don't keep it because your students are used to it or because it's comfortable and easy for you to do. If it's not working for your students and if it's not working for you as a teacher, change it. It doesn't make any sense to keep doing something that you don't like or that your students don't like or something that's just not working in the classroom. It's just gonna make you not feel so good about everything that's happening in your classroom. So if it doesn't work, change it. Tip number seven. So this is a really hard one for me because I am not a morning person, but 
I still did my best to arrive to work early. Now, I do this because I think it's better to arrive to work early than to stay later. And when you're there early, there's less teachers in the buildings to distract you. There's no students hanging around after school to distract you. So you get things done, you're fresh, you can um, get everything that you need prepped for that day. And um, when the morning starts, you just feel so ready for the day. And then also after school, you don't have to spend so much time staying late after work, um, you know, getting things done that you already could have gotten done in the morning. Tip number eight also goes along with the previous tip. Set a time that you're gonna go home at the end of the day and actually leave. It's really, really hard in the beginning of um, the school year and for a new teacher to stay hours and hours after the school day um trying to get things done because there's so much but you're gonna burn yourself out and you're gonna wear yourself out if you don't go home and relax and de-stress before the next school day so i would suggest set a time that you if you want to stay an hour two hours maximum three hours after school to get things done then do that but then go home don't stay at work forever until it's dark Try to get home and save some of your sanity. Tip number nine is simply my personal preference and what works for me, but it's to not take any schoolwork home. In the beginning of the school year, I did take work home to grade and do whatever it is I do at home, but now I do not take any work home. I don't take anything to grade. Um, the only thing I might do at home is plan because I can comfortably just do that on my couch and it's not a big deal but I don't take papers home to grade or anything like that because when I go home, I just want to de-stress, I just want to relax, and I don't really want to think about too much about work. So I make sure I set a time, like I said before, to, to leave, to get things done, and I just don't take my work home unless it's some kind of emergency that I need, need to be done the next school day and I don't have any time to do it while I'm at work. Tip number 10 is especially if you are in the younger grades is to drink the emergency vitamin C packets because you will get sick and you will get sick a lot, but you will get sick less often if you take the emergency um, little powder stuff that you put in your drink. Honestly, I don't think there's any way to avoid getting sick um, besides washing your hands a lot, using a lot of hand sanitizer. And when you become a school teacher, especially when you're your beginning teacher and you're not used to all the germs in the environment that you're in. So um, I would just find a way to prevent getting sick all the time is to drink emergency um, pretty often during the weeks. Tip number 11 is to use your personal days. As a new teacher, you sometimes get anxiety about leaving, about leaving your students, but don't turn down a fun opportunity or you know a vacation or anything just because you're afraid to leave. If you have those vacation days, use them. It'll save your sanity and you'll enjoy your job a lot more when you know that you can take time off and you don't have to worry about it so much because you can have those personal days that you can use, that you should be using. Tip number 12 is to play with any classroom technology before you use it in your actual instructions. There's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah. There's so many things that can go wrong when you're using technology. So I would suggest to play with it. Any websites or anything that you're using, make sure you play with them before you actually implement them into your classroom. Because I've tried to just jump in and run into you know new technology or new websites, and so many things start going wrong that I end up having to switch to something else until I figure out or fix the problem. So it just makes your life a lot easier when you've practiced and played with the website before you implement it in your classroom. Tip number 13 is to get to know the subs or the substitutes in your school. There's a big difference between a fun substitute that your kids love because you they get to do you know watch movies or play games or whatever the situation is and there's a difference between um, a sub that's really going to get your students to do work and maybe that can actually help them um, with their work that you're doing in your classroom. There are some days when you're gone and you're like, oh, my students can have a fun day because um, there's nothing that I really need them to catch up on while I'm gone. And there's other days, like there was a point where I was out for um, a whole week and I realized that I can't just have my students doing fun activities for a whole week. So 
I made sure I got the sub that I wanted to make sure that students are actually doing work and still learning while I'm not there in the classroom. Tip number 14 is to bring an extra pair of clothes or at least an extra shirt because especially when you're dealing with the little ones, who knows what's gonna happen to you during the day and you don't wanna have to go home because something happened to your clothes. So bring an extra pair, a change of clothes or a change of a shirt that um, you have in case of emergencies. And my last tip, tip number 15, is to just take the time sometimes to sit back and enjoy your job. Remember why you're doing what you're doing because you love teaching. It's so easy in the beginning to get overwhelmed and second guess yourselves and, and think about why are you in this job that requires so much work and sometimes not enough money. And just take your time and think about your students. Think about the smiles and the enjoyment that you see on their faces. Think about how it makes you feel when they, when the light bulb turns on and they get it. And um, how accomplished you feel when, when that happens. Take some time every once in a while and just reflect and think about why you love teaching in the first place. Okay, well, those are all of my 15 tips. Um, I know they weren't the typical tips, but they're the ones that I think are important that you don't necessarily think about all the time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you hopefully in another video soon. Bye.